I've worked on a lot of terrible productions in a lot of guises over the years and what always astounds me is the complete lack of adherence, particularly on indie films, to any kind of protocol or organisation. I've agreed to put myself in some seriously stupid situations in the name of art over the years with nobody but an inexperienced graduate at the helm. An individual who probably doesn't know how to disinfect their own toilet, let alone head up a bunch of other human beings. The crew today were certainly more experienced but nonetheless very foolhardy and one girl who I can more than a little bit see myself in paid the price for their stupidity. So here we go. For any budding young creative looking to break into the movie or TV business, Hollywood is the one-stop shop on the road to success. And Hollywood is no longer just a location in LA, but a concept driving the machine that is the industry. The bright lights, the celebrities, the glitz, the glamour, an amalgamation with the prospect of satisfying your need to create make the prospect of it so appealing. However, show business can certainly make or break you. In this harrowing tale, you'll see firsthand how easily things get completely out of control in an environment that rewards chaos and romanticizes rebellious rule breaking. Today, we will be examining the events of the 20th of February 2014, when a young camerawoman saw her life cut short while on set filming the now infamous Midnight Rider. The events of this tragic day would unfold, not in the sunny land of California, but instead in the somewhat less glitzy state of Georgia, where the film crew for an indie biopic had set up their scene for the day. This on-location scene would be shot at a 110-year-old trestle bridge, situated over a river and playing host to an active train line. During pre-production, many of the micro 20-person crew on set were reportedly unsettled by the slapdash and low-budget approach of the film's director, Randall Miller, and his wife, producer Jody Savin. But grumbling among crew is not uncommon, nor is cutting corners in an independent film environment. The show must go on. It was day one of filming, a prep day in fact and upon arrival, the crew were told by the higher-ups that in the event that a train was spotted coming their way, they would have about one minute to gather props and gear off the track and get out of the way. Sounds totally safe, right? The thing is, this kind of guerrilla filmmaking is frequently applauded and very, very common. Believe me, I have stories. On this occasion, a permit had in fact been sought. Hooray! And denied. Oh. The location manager as well as stunt director had refused to attend the shoot as a result, two of the most important people who should have been at this type of scene. The basic premise of the shot was to have actor William Hurt lying on a gurney in the middle of the bridge across the train tracks. Arty. Making an evacuation doubly difficult would be the shoddy workmanship of the bridge itself, the narrow gridwork of the trestle and gaping holes in the bridge. Additionally, the only escape route would be toward an oncoming train. It was certainly more than a little complicated than one might expect to get to safety in time, and it had been in no way practiced. The escape plan was simply a poorly thought through theory. And action. The crew began filming and before too long a train came barreling down the tracks at an estimated 60 miles per hour. The train was in fact scheduled, but for some reason nobody had looked into that, and the race to get off the tracks began. Among other crew on the tracks at that time was camera assistant 27-year-old Sarah Jones, an up-and-comer who had previously assisted on the TV show The Vampire Diaries. An indie film would lend credibility to her CV and she would likely be given more hands-on experience on such a production. As expected, the route off the bridge was a very tricky one to navigate, even without the pressure of a train hurtling towards you, so this proved a challenge for those in the train's path. Over the next few seconds it became clear that expensive tech gear and filming gear had to be cast aside to give those in danger a better chance of escape, but there wasn't enough time whatever way you looked at it. The camera continued rolling and the footage is easy to find here on YouTube. Looking at it as a person who has worked in the same job as Sarah before, it's clear to me that Sarah sticks to the back of the pack in accordance with her position on the crew, 
I don't know if that was a subconscious thing or not, but she quickly finds herself stuck behind the prop gurney as other crew members try to pull it off, whilst running toward the train now loudly blasting its horn. With it now clear that there was no way to get out of the train's way in time, those in the line of fire attempted to find safety on the gangplank with mixed degrees of success. The actor managed to avoid the train altogether, whereas hairstylist Joyce Gillard would be sucked into the path of the train, snapping her arm like a twig. She managed to wrestle free and survive by falling into the water below. The same could not be said of Sarah Jones, who was hit by the debris of the metal frame gurney on the track which was being used for the scene. She fell into the waters below and after the dust had settled she was fished out of the water, serving as a gruesome end to the filming of Midnight Rider. Oh, they did push to continue filming, but ultimately that was shut down. The shockwaves that were sent through the film industry by this event were felt worldwide, with a plethora of influential names in the industry offering their condolences, thoughts and prayers to the Jones family. This is perhaps shown by the multitude of celebrities adorning black ribbons at the Oscars that year in memory of Sarah Jones. This event would not be treated as an accident, but instead would amount to the largest case of negligent homicide in over a decade, and serve as one of the darkest days in film production history. The president of Motion Picture Studio Mechanics Union Local 479 Ray Brown had this to say. When I have done train work or been around trains for smaller productions up to major blockbusters, there are always several railroad personnel there with their hard hats, glasses and radios, and I can't imagine a more structured safety protocol, even beyond airlines, than the rail system. Aside from the blatant disrespect for the lives of others from director Randall Miller on an organisational front, what feels most tragic of all is perhaps that this shot could have easily been achieved with a green screen safely and been indistinguishable to the viewer, but cinematic snobbery got in the way. This was a pretty common approach for Miller as he had done the same thing for his indie flick, CBGB, where he shot on a live subway track. Other occasions saw him throw a piano down the stairs onto a pedestrian street and having a one-year-old baby run through a group of cows to get the perfect shot. Whether directly to blame or not, he certainly bred the right environment for reckless abandon and avoidable tragedy to occur. No matter what legal action is followed or what recourse was to come for the execs in charge of this indie film, nothing will bring back Sarah Jones. However, we can only hope that this serves as a lesson to all those in the film industry highlighting the importance of doing things by the book. Stealing a shot just might make your movie pop, but is it worth stealing a life to do it? I'd like to think it has, but experience tells me this will just be forgotten soon. Until we speak again, sending you good vibes. Stay safe out there.